Hello everybody, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. Welcome to another segment. Today we're going to talk about the three major methods that I recommend for your recovery. We always speak about my methods, which we'll discuss, and we speak about AA, which we'll also go over there, 12 steps, and we speak about the uh, rehab treatment centers, which offer the 24-7 supervision with the 30, 60, 90 day programs. When it comes to the AA, they have their 12 steps that we all pretty are familiar, we're all familiar with them. Um, my uh, situation that I had with AA, besides the fact that I felt I needed to be more active, my situation was is I just had a problem of the wording of the 12 steps and how they were worded. So I took the time to kind of reword in my own words the 12 steps, not only in my own words, but in my own uh, definition of what I read and how I feel. In other words, what I read their steps, whether I agree with them or not, the definition or the answers that I'm going to give you comparable to their 12 steps, which are my steps, uh, is the way I feel about those steps. Now, they have 12 steps. I am going to give you alternative 12 steps plus four more steps. So let's get right into this and then we'll discuss a few other things. So let's go right into it. Step number one, and I'm going to read some of these to you, but as I give you their step, I'm going to give you my alternative step. Step number one is we admitted we had powerless, we were powerless over alcohol that our lives had become unmanageable. Folks, my life has always been manageable. I managed to function, I managed to go to work, and I also managed to drink a lot. So here is an alternative to that step. My version is, I realize that I can control my use of alcohol and or drugs. I can control it, it is not manageable. I decided to drink a lot as much as I decided to quit drinking when I hit rock bottom. So that was their step number one. That's AA compared to my alternative step. Step number two. Their step number two reads, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Folks, I am not insane. I don't need to be restored to sanity. I am totally sane. I was never insane. What I am is an alcoholic. Here is my alternative. My alternative was I acknowledge that a spiritual awakening can help me to find new direction. My God within me and me and my willpower is what helps me. It's not the fact that I am insane. AA step number three made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. My own words and my alternative to step number three is I am ready to follow and stay true to the path that I have chosen. You understand what I mean when I say I have chosen? I chose to quit drinking and become sober. Yes, Rock Bottom had uh, helped me with that decision, but I chose that. I was sane when I made that decision on June 22nd, 2013, I was very sane to make a decision that I wanted to be sober for the rest of my life. Number four, their number four, or the book, the big book they call it, number four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. My alternative to number four would be, I have the strength and the courage to look within and to face whatever obstacles hinder my personal and spiritual growth. I have the courage to do that. There, number five, that's AA step number five, admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Okay, so that's that. Here is my alternative. I commit to become fully aware of how my use of alcohol can hurt everyone around me. My wrongs 
no matter what I did, I would like to go to those people and rectify that. But I will not go to a complete stranger at AA and start telling them all my history. I won't do it. And this is why I just feel that AA just tries to put a grip on people and kind of suck them in. And I'll go through what I, uh, after some studies, what I found out about statistics, about AA and alternative methods. Number six, that's AA number six, step number six. We entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. I understand that one. Sounds good. Here's my alternative to that one. My number six. I'm changing my life and my developing my human potential. I am changing my life and developing my human potential. I will change and make myself a better person. Step number seven through AA. Humble asked him to remove our shortcomings. Okay. Humbly ask him to remove our shortcoming. That is great because I do you utilize a higher power. In my case, that is my God. And I do utilize and ask him to help me and, and forgive me for my shortcomings. But here's my alternative in the wording. I am proud of my strength and my ability to grow and will seek guidance. Do you see, folks, how my wording is just a little bit more relaxing it's a little bit more understanding and it's not so uh, uh, set in a way like a textbook it's it's more it's an easier flow to my wording I'm not saying their wording is bad I'm not saying that the steps don't work because they do however when I talk to you at the end of the 12 steps or in my case 16 I will just go over a couple statistics with you number eight Step number eight through AA, made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to all of them. Great. It is always great to go out and, and to ask for forgiveness for the people you've hurt in your life. I totally agree with that. Here is my alternative way of wording, number eight. I will do all I can to make up for the ways I have hurt myself and others. Step number nine, make direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Wording is very good. I truly believe that wording needs to be uh, very simple, very short, to make it very understanding. So here's my alternative to step number nine. I will take direct action to correct my wrong from the from the past. I will fix anything that I have done in the past and correct that as much as I can and much as much as people will accept uh, my apologies for for anything I might have done in the past during my course of uh, abusing um, alcohol um, and some people out there some alcohol and drugs. Number ten. This is AA step number ten. Continue to take personal inventory. And when we're wrong, promptly admit it. I totally agree with that one, but here's my alternative. Now, I'm not saying their wording is anything other than their wording, and my wording is anything other than my wording. The only thing I am explaining is that my wording is simply and simple to understand. It's very short, and uh, it's very direct. So here is my alternative to step number 10. I still strive to be self-aware and follow the new path I have chosen. Again, I have chosen. You have to understand, folks, AA will directly want you to do it one way and one way only. And I'm not saying it's bad. If you choose to do that, that's fine. I'm just saying that I want you and I definitely want me to be able to choose how I get to sobriety, how I, at the end of the day, that we're all in the same boat. We need to be able to choose that. And you can choose between my methods, AA, rehab centers, or any other method. So the, the, those are choices. Number 11. This is step, AA step number 11. This is a long one, so I need to look over there a little bit because it is long. And, and do you remember what I had said? I try to keep it short, simple, and understandable. So here is theirs. 
sought through prayer and mediation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him praying only for the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out now those are a lot of words and it has a huge meaning and that huge meaning in so many words can be summed up in my alternative uh, step 11 I will continue to develop my potential again mine through helping others and strive to become fully conscious of myself and the life around me that is very simple again all these words make it very hard uh, for people to understand um, and and we need to um, find alternatives which I did and and I will live by my own alternative words and so you can also adapt those by all means and you can also continue with AA near step 12 and uh, go to rehab center so here's number 12 again a very long paragraph having a spiritual awakening I've seen the light in other words you have seen God you feel you feel God so having a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps these 12 steps we try to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs pretty much what that's saying in all those words is that whatever you have done throughout the prior 11 steps at step 12 is what you want to practice what you preach and preach what you practice here's my alternative to step 12 I will continue to develop my own potential and spirituality and will actively help others like I have been doing without AA who have weaknesses controlling their own use of alcohol and or drugs. Folks, my videotapes, my websites, my Facebook page is exactly step 12, but I put it in such a simple way of wording it to make you understand. Now, those are the AA's uh, 12 steps and my alternative steps. We all, whether it's me or AA, will end up at the same, hopefully we'll all end up at the same end result. And that is sobriety. No more substance abuse. Now, I wanted to add four more steps to the 12 steps by AA and my alternative steps. Step number 13, building and maintaining motivation. What does that mean? To build motivation excites you, makes you want to continuously stay sober, makes you want to help people and maintain that motivation. That is step 13 in my AA, in my own little AA mind, in my own method. Number 14, coping with urges why is that not in the AA 12-step program to cope with an urge is one of the most important things to learn and to to live with it's very hard to live with you go into that liquor shop you go to the deli uh, at the corner and there's somebody selling drugs your urge in the beginning and even right now if you're doing this for a while is going to be very high so you need to learn to cope with the urges my step number 15 is managing thoughts feelings and behaviors what does that mean as we go through life and and we're continuously seeking sobriety and less substance abuse uh, to, to the end goal of no substance abuse is we're gonna have thoughts of possibly relapse and we're gonna have feelings uh, of craving a beer or a vodka or a joint or marijuana or a cocaine and our behaviors have to be controlled because our managing our thoughts to manage our thoughts and our feelings will at the end result determine your behavior Do you understand so that is my step number 15 and I want to add my last step and that's number 16 and that is a very important one and that is to live a balanced life separate yourself into little pieces so you have your love you have your sobriety you have your job you have uh, hobbies you have 
alone time. That is to live a balanced life. Now, I promised I would tell you a couple statistics, and these statistics are not made up by me. These are proven facts. 5% of all people that go through AA have a, uh, a success rate. 5%. Those are astonishing numbers. That means 95%. So out of 100 people in an AA class, 95 people won't succeed. This is based on the first year. Most people within a month drop out. So I read further into it to figure out why is it that people do what they do at AA. And here are some of the reasons. Again, they're not my reasons. These are reasons. These are proven facts. And they were put on to, excuse me, they were put on to uh, paper for everyone to, to read. Newcomers, when they go to AA, they feel very uncomfortable because all the old timers, people that have been there six months, a year, 20 years, all sit in the corner, uh, whisper to each other, um, and, and kind of make you feel uncomfortable. Newcomers, when they come, not only do they come there with an addiction of alcohol and or drugs, but they pick up new addictions. These were interview, interviewees of newcomers after the fact, after they left uh, AA, of why they left. They were picking up habits such as excessive smoking, excessive caffeine consumption. So they go in there and, and they feel uncomfortable. They don't feel welcome. They feel that they're eliminating or trying to eliminate one addiction to pick up a new addiction. Those are just some examples. So that 5% is a huge amount uh, of... Uh, actually, let me rephrase that. 95% of a failure rate is huge. 5% is not huge. 5% is a minimal amount of people that actually succeed in AA. AA is one of the most wild, uh, worldwide used uh, uh, rehab uh, form all over the world because other parts of the world just don't know that there are other methods. There are about five professional programs to help you with your addiction. And then you have people like myself and you have people, uh, churches and things as such to try to help you with different methods. But AA uh, is is a great organization. It's been around from I believe since 1936, and it I thought had a huge success rate. What it does have it has a huge amount of people that come there, uh, but to have a lot of people in the beginning and not have the people middle through at the end, uh, that is just camouflaging the amount of numbers in the beginning, and that's all it is. Again. You make the choice on how you you want to deal with your addiction. You have AA. You have, like I just went over all my alternative um, steps. And then you have uh, treatment centers. Now, these treatment centers are 24-7, meaning 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You're under supervision. And that is great if you have a weak sense of um, behavior issues or trust issues or urging issues, meaning uh, you, you can't behave in, in, in a manner at home that is responsible enough to leave you at home because you might drink, you might smoke, you might snort. Meaning your urges are so severe that no matter what, nobody at your house, your wife, your husband, your mother, your father can't watch you 24-7. So your urges are so severe that we need to, to have you go into one of these treatment centers. They offer the 30, 60, and 90-day programs. They are so good uh, of, of helping you because it's, all they do is concentrate on you. It is a permanent situation for those days of 24 hours a day of constantly uh, helping you um, through your addiction issues and, and, and help you to make you stronger and make you understand how uh, addiction is so bad for you and make you understand how you to, to live with it. Because remind you, alcoholism and drug addiction is not a choice by you. Sure, I started off by saying that I chose to drink, but I only chose to drink because it's in my body as a disease because I wanted it, the urge. 
just as much as I chose to drink is as much as I chose not to drink. So you have to understand that alcoholism and drug addiction is a disease. It's up to you to learn how to live with that disease, how to train yourself to live with that disease. Whether it's AA, how to work the 12 steps. Whether it's you appreciate my methods, how to work my 16 alternative steps. Whether it's 24-7 supervision in a rehab center. Those are avenues for you. Like I said before, your higher power, whoever it might be, in my case it's God, my, my higher power is somebody that I rely on not just for my addiction but for my everyday life you have to remember God created each and every one of us in a matter of perfection it is us that reshaped what God created by me drinking or me lying or me stealing or you doing any of those you are recreating what God created which was perfection so if you want to go back to what God created, you need to ask your higher power, in my case, my God, I need to say, God, forgive me for I have sinned, forgive me. And God will take you in that remolded shape that you decided to change, take you back into his arms and reshape you into perfection that he created in the first place. So reach for your higher powers, reach for God, work the steps whether it being AA if you want to work with my methods my alternative steps work with that they have worked for me what I read to you I do every single day if it requires me to there are some steps even in AA you don't need to do every day there is no way that anyone in AA can tell me that every day I need to go and apologize for something I've done in the past I haven't done enough to apologize every day to people I really haven't. I don't think there's anyone that has. So out of my 16 alternative steps or even AA's 12 steps, utilize any of them, whatever you feel that you need to on a daily basis. If you go into the program, when you sit in those classrooms and you listen to the professors, counselors, or whatever it might be, listen to them and, and absorb Put it all into your mind and into your heart. Absorb that because you're there for a reason and that's, that's to correct and live with an issue that you have. I hope to God that one day I do succeed in becoming a substance abuse counselor. Like I stated in one of my other videos, I am now actively searching for the right education for this. I will pursue that education and I will conquer and achieve becoming a substance abuse counselor. Whether I make money doing it or not, that's a whole different ball game. I am uh, in the optical field, like I've told you many times for a lot of years now, 30 years, I uh, welcome a change. However, I can juggle both. Uh, I'm doing it right now, indirectly, and although I'm not in a physical sense counseling, but I am in the cyber sense counseling people because I'm, I'm assuming that people watch me uh, they're not watching me uh, because there's nothing else on TV. They want to hear what I have to say, whether it being good or bad. They want to hear it. And uh, the only thing that I can really say that if you don't agree with something, that probably is bad. If you agree with it, then it's good. And that's in anything what we do in life. So now we have spoken about those things in reference to there's my methods, there's AA, and then there's the... Um, the treatment centers and then of course the higher power we need to reach to God we need to ask God for forgiveness we need to ask God to direct and guide us on a daily base and then you can go to your YMCA's you can go to the uh, Lions Clubs has AA meetings they have other meetings you can go uh, to, to church you can go to Knights of Columbus they all have meetings there are so many other meetings than AA I'm not trashing AA mind you I am just giving you alternatives to AA. We don't all need to march that straight line, the AA line. We can branch out and see what else is out there. If AA works for you, stick with it. I don't care if you told me that uh, watching anything on TV, The Price is Right works for you for your addiction. If that's what works, watch The Price is Right 
If it means you are sober, you will stay sober. Do you understand what I'm saying? No matter what it takes to get you to stay sober, be sober for the rest of your life and help other people, that's what it will be. That's what it is. I don't care what it is. Just do it. Stick with it. I am here to tell you what I am capable of doing for you. And my methods have given me great results. It has built up my uh, motivation. It has built up my self-esteem. And it has built up my willingness to help other alcoholics and other people on drugs. I don't have to do this for any other reason other than to help you. Because when I help you, I help me. It keeps my mind fresh of alcoholism and drug addiction every time I do these videos. So, mind you, if you want to recreate what I am creating every day and continuously do what I do, it is a great method, it works great, and I hope to God that whatever you decide you do, it works as good as my methods or my way of doing it because it does work for me. Let me go over contact information. You know my name. It's Ralph Friedrichs. You can reach me on my email at ralphfriedrichs. Uh, excuse me, ralphfriedrichs at yahoo.com. It's r a l f dot f r i e d r i c h s at yahoo.com. I have my website. On my website, you have massive amount of videos. A lot of them are my own. You have other videos, articles, newspaper clippings, all sorts of other things, and these are all dispense directly from a doctor, psychologist, or psychiatrist. Those are the professionals. I am not here to advise you or dispense any medical uh, uh, opinions. I am here to give what other people have done and merely give it to you, pass it on to you, so that you can experience what I'm experiencing on a daily basis, and that is recovery, learning to live with addiction, and moving forward and being motivated about it. So you have www.clearviews.info. That's C L E A R V I E W S dot I N F O. On Facebook, I have my page, clearviews.info. I mentioned this once before, and you know, my first 20 videos, I never mentioned what Clearviews really stood for. So I want to just uh, go over really quickly with you folks again. I came up with the word clear and of course views is to view and what clear stands for the C is for community, the L is for lessons, the E is for empower, the A is for addictions and the R is for recovery. Community lessons empower addiction recovery. It is us as a community, you listening and watching me and me, we are a community. Our lessons that we learn, all my past lessons that I'm passing on to you is, is for you to learn and to deal with your addiction and to recover from it. And of course, so we have to clear and views is to view what we're doing. So clear views dot and the info is for information. That is basically what my website's about. Now, my phone number is 631-599-0218. You can call me anytime. You can text me. I have unlimited texting. Uh, if, you do, if you don't want to speak to me directly, you feel more comfortable with texting, that's fine. You can also uh, call my business number, which I am the only person that utilizes that business phone, and that is 844 Five, five that stands for 844-I-WELL, that's E-Y-E-W-E-L-L. -L. So we have all these different ways to contact me, and I welcome for you to contact me. I am here for me to get help by helping you. But you know where I am, because you're looking at my video, but I don't know who you are, so you need to contact me. I just want to give a quick shout-out uh, shout to my friend up north, it is, uh, uh, he completed his third weekend, third weekend sober. So I just want to congratulate him and I want to say job well done because I am so proud of you that you have now succeeded three weeks. And I hope to God that you listen to my um, 
my advisement about working too much and working too many hours because that will stress you out and if you remember yesterday's video the day before about stress there are certain signs of relapse with certain stress one of them was for overworking yourself so calm down slow down step back take self inventory and continue doing what you're doing because you are doing great three weeks only another week away and you're at a full month and congratulations for that my friends down south I have Florida we have one Texas we have one in Virginia I haven't heard from you folks too much uh, I continuously do send you any copy of my video whether it's through YouTube or Facebook or texting uh, my friend in Virginia, I apologize about sending it via text. I didn't realize that you had a prepaid phone, uh, but utilize um, going onto YouTube or onto Facebook and you could see my videos. Shout out to Texas, job well done. Florida, job well done. And Virginia, job well done. Everybody continuously do what you're doing. Try to constantly watch my videos. It is full of good advice. For you to continuously live with your disease not by choice through your addiction remember that before I go now I just want to go over my last four steps of my 16 alternative steps to the 12 steps by AA number 13 building and maintaining motivation folks when I speak I try to motivate myself to sound excited because I am excited to speak to you folks. I am excited that I am sober since June 22nd, 2013. I'm excited to think that you will achieve what I'm achieving. I'm excited for my friend up north. He has achieved three weeks of no alcohol. Can you imagine that? I know what it's like because the first week or two, it was the worst two weeks. I didn't think I could live without it. I was tempted so much, but because I hit rock bottom and I knew that was it, I didn't do it. Can you imagine if I decided to drink tomorrow? I could not live with myself doing that because it's people like you watching me and my loved ones that motivate me enough not to do that. That is my step 13. My step 14, it's pretty much what we just spoke of. Uh, cope with the urges we need to cope with urges sure you're gonna have an urge to drink sure you're gonna have an urge to smoke but you need to learn and cope with them we all have urges whether it's our addictions whether it's whatever we all have urges but we need to control and cope with them that is my step 14 my step 15 is managing our thoughts our feelings and our behaviors our thoughts could be could be the urge it could be we want to drink and we need to curb those urges so our thoughts are here saying I want to drink I want to smoke I want to snort we need to manage them take control of your thoughts take control of your feelings if you feel that you need to drink or smoke or snort Think of something, other uh, things that you might be able to do. Go on a long walk, listen to music, talk to a loved one, make a phone call, call your parents to see how they're doing. Call a good friend, reconnect with old friends. Those are all things that you could be doing. And your behavior is very important. We spoke about uh, behavior of a couple segments, videos back. And behavior is so important because when we were drinking and smoking and snorting, our behavior was unacceptable. We were moody. We snapped. We yelled. We cursed. That is unacceptable behavior. Now that we're looking at recovery to live with addiction, we need to control our behavior. We can't just say and do whatever comes to our mind that is unacceptable and my number 15 excuse me my number 16 of my 16 step program is a balanced life that means every avenue every branch of your body comes together to make a complete balanced life 
Sure, you might have strengths in some things, like your job is stronger than your personal life. You need to take your strengths, put them with your weaknesses to create a balanced life. You need to do that because a balanced life eliminates a lot of the other things that come with uh, uh, alcoholism and drug addiction, like urges, like bad behavior. So a balanced life or financial situations, all that can be worked with a balanced life. Most of us, including myself, during our addiction, or we still, I still have the addiction, during my alcohol consumption, had a very unbalanced life. Like a seesaw, all the weight was on one end, and that was my alcoholism. So my good life was way up in the air because all the weight on, like the seesaw, was on one end. Don't let your life be like that. Work with what you have. Eliminate the alcohol. Eliminate the drugs. And ten continuously seek some sort of recovery, whether it's the methods that I displayed in my own life, whether it's AA, whether it's rehab centers, no matter what, ask God for forgiveness for anything that you might have done in the past to hurt people with your uh, alcoholism and or drug addiction. Ask God for forgiveness, live a straight life, continuously know that he created to be perfect everyone out there is special it doesn't matter if you're an alcoholic it doesn't matter if you're addicted to drugs you are special you just need to work with your addiction and just work with it and and you will conquer uh, any addiction that you have you'll never eliminate it but you'll learn to live with it because if you believe it here you can achieve it there I promise you a sober today makes for a much better tomorrow. I guarantee it. My tomorrows on June 22nd, my 23rd was better. 24th, 26th, then July was better. Then December was better. Then February came along and here we are, August. And I'm here to tell you that you can live without alcohol, that you can live without drugs. But you cannot live without trying. Just by saying, today, I'm going to eliminate drugs and alcohol is not enough. You need to educate yourself. You need to live a life of constantly battling this addiction. This addiction is so strong that unless you go head on and say, you will not take my life, you're going to lose. And I don't want that from you. The title of all my videos is, Are You Ready to Take Your Life Back? Take your life back. Alcohol, I want my life back. Drugs, I want my life back. And God, I'm here, remold me in what God created. What you cre created, God, remold me. And then shine around your family. Make your husband your, or your wife or your children know that this is the person that they met years ago. Make your pa parents proud of you. Make yourself proud of you. When you look in the mirror, it's not like the old days when you're drunk or, or on drugs and you just looked and you had mascara running and wrinkled face and flush and drooling or whatever. Look in the mirror and say, God, I look good. God, thank you so much. I am back to where I was. And you do this every day. I promise you, you will win. You will Live with your addiction, because if you believe it, you will achieve it. I hope everybody has a great week coming up, July 4th, a great week. I hope to God that we all stay sober. I know I will give it 150% for my sobriety, as I have since June 22nd, 2013, and I hope you do the same. Please watch my videos. Reach out to me, five nine nine. Excuse me, 631-599-0218. Ralph.Friedrichs at yahoo.com, www.clearviews.info. Uh, then you have clearviews.info on Facebook. Reach out. We can talk. We can text. Or we can just write to each other. But we need to communicate. You need help. I'm here to help you. Stay safe. But more importantly, stay sober. And God bless you.